10,000 U.S. troops are massing near the Iraqi capital and preparing to carry out incursions into the city to try and quell fighting and civil disturbances. But so far, they have not even been able to keep order. The so-called U.S. peacemakers stood by as chaos and think I know from scholars from the United States that they have warned the Pentagon about the museum and they have even given them the uh, coordinates of hundreds of archaeological sites in the south to avoid them when the American forces would be moving up from the south to Baghdad and I was told by some of the scholars that went to the Pentagon they told them and they even gave them the coordinates of the museum in Baghdad. And they told them, if you go there, please protect the museum. You will find someone called Donny George. He will be a very, he is a very cooperative guy. He will help you to control and protect the museum. But nobody came. There was a tank very close to the museum. When the looting was about to start, there were hundreds of people outside the museum with toll bars and hammers and, and, and Kalashnikovs in their hands. The man in charge of the tank actually made a call and then he turned to our guy and he said, we're sorry, we don't have orders for that. And this is exactly what happened. And I'm sure of that because the same tank was one of the tanks that afterwards came and guarded the museum. Um, the first days when I came back to the museum, we checked everything. And I came to a kind of theory that there were three kind of people that came into the museum. Group number one, or we call them groups. Group number one, those were the people who went into the uh, administration area of the museum and those were the people exactly like the other ones uh, that went into the governmental buildings and just grabbed everything that can be sold poor people maybe uh, furniture uh, computers telephones even switches for the electricity they took everything group number two were the ones who went into the galleries of the museum but those ones had brought with them glass cutters which I found, uh, which I believe they were there for, with them to cut the showcases. They had good knowledge of archaeology and antiquities because it looks like they've been there when the museum was opened some time ago. Uh, this means uh, when they passed by uh, the uh, gypsum replicas we had in the museum, they never touched them. They knew these were replicas. The third group would be the ones that went into the storerooms of the museum. They went through uh, 
the first hole down there, they never touched anything. They went to the second hole in complete darkness and went to some boxes that the museum had stored, the smallest and precious material there. Those were the uh, cylinder seals and the jewelry. And just from the cylinder seals, they took over 5,000 cylinder seals. My youngest son was threatened with a letter from Al-Qaeda people uh, by, you know, by uh, some stupid ex accusations. Uh, he was 17 then and uh, they said that he has been cursing Islam and he has been teasing Muslim girls and uh, he should write an apology letter and uh, the same day and with a fine of 1,000 US dollars. Otherwise, the next day, their units either will kill him immediately or they will kidnap him and kill him by beheading him. The message was uh, put in an envelope. With that, there was a bullet, and they have dropped it in the driveway of my parents in Dora. What I have seen in reality is, is completely different, and uh, uh, it's real what I have seen. Uh, uh, what I have seen, uh, I don't want anyone to see it because it has been very, very hard. <laughs> Yeah.